Solar power can be used in many ways. It creates both wind and waves, and it can be converted directly into energy. But it is most efficiently utilized in hydropower. The sun makes water evaporate and it gets what is known as height energy. When precipitation falls on the sea, it has lost all its energy. But when precipitation falls in the mountains, it is still bursting dynamic, clean energy. On its way back to the sea, water releases this energy with the help of power stations. A perpetual cycle generating pure, clean energy with no waste or pollution. Nature has given Norway ideal terrain for hydropower. The country has numerous large mountain formations and high waterfalls. There is usually enough precipitation all year round. Modern hydroelectric power stations are discreetly hidden inside mountains. Inside the power hall, we only see part of the power unit, the top of the generator. A power unit consists of two main components. On the top there is a generator which rotates to make electricity, and on the bottom there is a turbine which runs the generator. Water drives the turbine around, and turbines are designed in different ways, depending on water pressure and volume. Modern turbines convert up to 94% of the height energy in the water into mechanical rotation and electricity. A power plant often has several generators. Water is channeled into turbines through inlet tunnels from reservoirs that are often mountain lakes that have been dammed up. Reservoirs are often linked together in chains connected by tunnels. In periods with heavy precipitation, excess power can be used to pump water up to the highest reservoirs. The reservoir's water levels will therefore vary throughout the year, but a minimum water level is always stipulated to protect the environment. Run of river power stations work on the same principle, but here water from the through flowing river passes through the turbines. Although the water does not fall from great heights, the volumes of water are even greater and can run enormous turbines, often with propellers up to 10 meters in diameter. These massive forces produce huge amounts of power. Large transformers ensure the electricity has the correct voltage and is adapted to the supply grid. All ECO's power stations are controlled from the power center at Gul. Hatches open and close automatically as required in the various reservoirs. They are controlled by the power center's schedules. The power center also controls other energy companies' facilities. ECO is one of the Nordic region's largest producers of clean electrical energy. The enterprise helps ensure that society has a stable, adequate power supply. ECO is headquartered in Oslo. The group owns and operates power stations throughout southern Norway. ECO also contributes to the development of companies that it co-owns. These are Vinstra Kraftselskap, Oplandskraft, Opland Energi and Norsk Grønkraft. ECO's history dates back more than a century. One December evening in 1892, something happened to change the future of Norway's capital city. Christiania Electricity Board lit the city's first electric streetlights. Then along came another innovation, electric trams. Electricity had come to stay, and the demand for it soon exceeded all expectations. Industry also realized there were clear advantages to using electricity. Electric engines soon replaced complicated machinery, and electricity also paved the way for new energy-intensive industries. It was not long before steam-driven generators failed to keep up with demand. 
Uslo Lieswerker, the precursor of today's eco, decided to try something new, that is, to make electricity from water. Hamann, Christiana's first hydroelectric power station, was completed at Maridalen in 1900. This was a daring pioneer project intended to meet all the city's electricity needs for all eternity. However, the exponential rise in consumption meant that Uslo was forced to seek new opportunities beyond the city limits. From 1910 onwards, the company acquired waterfall rights on the river Gloma near the town of Ashim, from Merkfoss to Sulbergfoss. The gigantic power station was completed in 1924. The demand for electricity grew dramatically in the 1930s and 1940s, but Uslo Lieswerker had been foresighted enough to buy attractive waterfall rights in the mountains of southern Norway. A vast area in Hallingdal and Hemsedal became the arena for extensive development, resulting in the construction of a total of nine power stations and several mountain reservoirs. The first power station, Hul 1, was completed in 1949. In 1954, Uslo Lieswerker helped to found Oplandskraft and took part in the development of Vinstra in Opland County. The largest development project ever carried out by Uslo Lieswerker was at Auland from 1969 to 1989. There, six power stations harnessed this vast mountain area's tremendous volumes of water and huge waterfall resources. The Aulan development project stands out as a prime example of how the environment can be safeguarded despite technical challenges. Between 2001 and 2003, ECO acquired the majority of Opland Energi, which has 18 power stations in Opland and Hedmark counties. A number of other new power plants have subsequently been developed, such as Övre Uta, one of the largest power development projects in Norway in recent years. ECO's power stations have been upgraded and expanded continuously. New machinery and turbines, better waterways and upgrading of the dam facilities help ensure that we get more and more power out of every single drop. These power development projects have also had a major impact on employment and the economies of their host municipalities. The road network has also been expanded and improved considerably. Today's hydropower development projects disturb the environment as little as possible. Great emphasis has been placed on caring for the landscape, not least by building weirs, salmon ladders and fish hatcheries. More than one million fish are stocked in Eco's wholly and partially owned facilities each year. Hydropower has made a formidable contribution to the prosperity of Norwegian society as a whole. This is also translated into valuable tax revenues for the host municipalities. The knowledge and expertise developed by working with concrete and mountain technology has also played a pivotal role in Norway's petroleum industry. ECO's production planners in Oslo strive to get as much as possible out of each drop of water in the reservoirs. Each day, Thorough analyses are made of the weather, inflow and market conditions before power is produced and sold through Nordpool, the common Nordic power exchange. Eco and other Nordic producers offer power on Nordpool. The buyers include power suppliers, which then resell the power to the end users. Energy prices are a product of supply and demand. The market helps improve the efficiency of the production and distribution of electricity. Energy prices ensure a balance between how much power we use and how much is available to us. Rising prices indicate that more power is required to meet the need, and high prices stimulate more production and less consumption. Due to considerable variations in precipitation from year to year, in Norway we are completely dependent on having exchange capacity with the countries around us. That makes us less vulnerable to years with little precipitation, since power can be imported then. This also means that we can export power in wet years and when prices are higher abroad. Produced power cannot be saved, but water can be stored in reservoirs. In contrast to wind power and other energy sources, hydropower production can swiftly be regulated up and down to adapt to the demand for power. The fact that hydropower can be regulated like this is of great importance for the focus placed on other renewable energy. 
Having a large amount of regulatable energy like hydropower is a prerequisite for developing, for example, wind power, which cannot be regulated to any great extent. Society is becoming increasingly dependent on electricity. Many places produce electricity using fossil sources, such as coal or oil, that lead to greenhouse gas emissions. They can be replaced by renewable energy sources. Increasing renewable power production in Norway will have environmental dividends because it will reduce fossil-based power production in other countries. For each additional gigawatt hour of hydropower production, emissions are reduced by the equivalent of what 200 cars produce in a year. All Eco's power production is based on renewable sources that are virtually free of emissions of greenhouse gases. The world will not tolerate more greenhouse gas emissions. Most people would agree with that. ECO is working actively to do something about this. Sometimes production can be increased significantly by continuing to upgrade the power plants and by the development of accessible waterfalls. ECO is involved in a number of projects on its own or in collaboration with other companies. Hydropower is one of many solutions to future energy and climate challenges. The possibilities are great and the challenges are many. With more than 100 years experience in the energy industry, ECO will be a key player in the energy society of the future based on clean power. Our job will continue to be to manage our water resources as well as possible for society and the environment.